Welcome back to Silhouette Success. Today I'm going to show you how to take different shapes and create custom boxes that you can use to give away all of your crafty items. Holiday season is right around the corner. You're not going to want to miss this, so stick around. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success, and I am going to ask a huge favor today. If at any time you find some useful information in this video, please hit the like button. It helps to push this video out into the YouTube universe, and it helps other crafters like you find the information. Now, as far as the lesson for today goes, it is extremely important because it not only teaches you how to create a template for a box, it gives you the base to build upon where you can take different shapes, combine them together and create a ton of different things. Whatever you can imagine, you can build it with the basic shapes in Silhouette Studio. Now, if everyone is ready to learn something new today, let's do this. I have my page set up just to a normal 12 by 12 mat for the Cameo 4. Today I'm going to be creating a box for my post-it notes. So I'm going to select a rectangle, hold down my shift key, draw out a perfect square. Then I can come up to the top and adjust the height and the width. My lock aspect ratio button is on and I'm going to have this come in at 3.1 inches that is slightly larger than the post-it note block. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. This one is the bottom of the box. This is going to be one of the side flaps, but I don't need it this tall. So I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio and change the height on this to 0.5. That will be a half inch. And I need one of these for each of the sides. So I'm going to duplicate that and drag it down to the bottom. Duplicate again, open up my transform tab, go to the third tab, which is rotate, and I'm going to rotate it to 90 degrees. Pull that up over to this side and duplicate it. Now you can see here that I do have the snap to guides on. That's going to be very helpful when you're designing your boxes because you want everything to line up perfectly. You can find that tab in your page setup panel, in the grid settings, snap to guides. Okay, this is the basic layout of the box. I have the bottom and the four sides, but now I need a way to make sure that all of the sides stay up and in the right place. So, I am going to go ahead and duplicate each one of these sides. So this flap will fold up for the side. This flap will fold in. Let's duplicate that again for the other side. And now for these sides, I'm going to come over here to my flexi shapes, grab a trapezoid, right-click and convert to path. Then I'm going to rotate that to 90 degrees. Now I need a tab on each of these flaps on each side, but I need it to be the same width as, or I'm sorry, the same height as this. So I have it selected. Let's go up to height, double-click, and 0.5 enter whoops that is apparently the wrong one i rotated it that's why so let's do this one here 0.5 enter that looks much better and now that will match up with that we're going to duplicate bring that one down to the bottom duplicate again rotate to 270 degrees bring that one over here and duplicate that for the top 
Okay, now we have all of the pieces for the bottom of our box. We need to start working on our score lines. In order to create a score line, you want to grab your line tools, this one right here. Hold down your shift key and pull out. This does not have to be exact. You just want to make sure that it is not crooked in any way. And when you hold down your shift key and pull, then it creates a straight line. In order to score on the Cameo 4 machines, you need a dashed line. You can turn a solid line into a dashed line right here. I like to go with the second option and I am going to change the line color to red because the box cut lines are black. So now my score lines are red, my cut lines are black. I'm going to pull this one down. I'm going to line it up right at the corner and the top of the bottom of the box. And yes, it is entirely too long, so let's fix that. We'll just pull it in until this side lines up. Now we can duplicate that for the bottom. Pull that all the way down. Now we're going to duplicate it again, and we are going to rotate it to 90 degrees. We can pull this one up to this side, get it lined up, duplicate it, Pull this one over to this side. I'm going to duplicate these both again. This one will line up with this edge. And this one will line up with this edge. That looks just a bit off. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom in just a bit here see if I can select the score line. It's kind of hard to see. Now we are going to drag this one up and out so that it will cover the tab, uh, the side of the box as well once we get that put together. And we can adjust these if we need to in a bit, but the score lines don't really have to be exact either. Now we have our score lines set in place. I'm going to select this box and this score line and group them together. And the same for this one because we don't really want them to be moving around at all. I'm going to take the side of the box, bring it down. You can see when it meets up with the bottom of the box, the blue line lights up. After I have the two of them lined up, I select the flap and I bring it just a little bit closer so I know that they are overlapping and we can weld them together. I'm going to do the same thing for the sides. Bring it in, line it up, select it, and then move it just one click closer with my arrow key. This is not difficult. It is repetitive. I'm just going to go through and keep lining everything up and making sure that it overlaps. Okay, now all of the blue pieces should be overlapping. I'm going to select this piece and this piece, and I am going to ungroup the score lines. Oops, let's undo that. Now I'm going to go to select by color, and I'm going to click on red because I want to select all of my score lines. Right click and group. Now I'm going to go up to the black, I'm going to select all of the ones with the black cut lines that will be the blue pieces of our box. Select that, and then I'm going to right click and weld all of that together. Now all of the blue is one solid cut. Then you have your red score lines. Let's select both the score lines and the box, right click, and duplicate, pull that down here, and you want your score lines 
and the box for the top to be just slightly larger than the bottom of the box so that it fits over top of it. So you can see that this measurement is 4.054. If we get it up to 4.1, it should be good to go. Maybe a little bit larger than that. So I brought it up to 4.125. So this top part will be larger than the bottom part. And the bottom part should be just large enough to hold a packet of post-it notes. At this point, we can group each one of these together, the box and the score lines, and send them over to cut. Okay, once you have all of your score marks folded, you're going to want to tuck these tabs in, fold this up, and this gets folded over. I like to use hot glue on my boxes. It gives it just a little bit of stability. I'm gonna glue the little tabs first. Make sure that everything is squared up. Set them in place. And then we can glue this flap and press it down. You can add flaps to these sides as well to fold over to give it a more finished look. You would just add another box the same size as this and then fold it over. This would be a score line instead of cut line. go through the same exact process. So here are the two pieces of the box. They do fit nicely inside one another. And again, I did measure so that this would fit a pack of sticky notes. Get that set right inside there. And replace the lid and I made that to match the box that I created to hold the tools for my cameo for which I use often if you want to see the video on how to create a box for your cameo for tools that video is right here if you're done with YouTube for the day, go create something amazing. I'll see you in the next video.